Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to another edition of the High Level Workflow Series, where we're helping you become experts in setting up workflows so that you can automate more of your business processes and become more efficient and faster. Today, I'm gonna to be going deep on one of the most common functions that you're gonna be using when building high level workflows. We're gonna go deep on appointments. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about how appointment triggers and actions work and give you everything you need to start booking more appointments and get higher show up rates. Hey, guys, it's Ron Medlin again with High Ticket with High Level, where we help coach consultants, course creators, and agency owners book more sales calls and close more deals without having to hire an appointment setting service by bringing their appointment setting in-house. And if you're finding any value in this video, be sure and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, and I'll be dropping all the links that I refer to in the video today in the description below. Now let's head over to the computer and jump into appointment. All right, y'all, so we're back in the workflows area of the High Ticket with High Level Snapshot. To get there, you're gonna click on automation in the left-hand side here or in the old view, you see workflows. Now, this will take you to the actual main workflow dashboard. And if you've been following the workflow series for a while, you know that I like to stay organized by using workflow folders. And I structure my folders in the way that the marketing and sales process happens. That helps me to stay super organized. I can find any workflow at any time so I can go in and make changes. Now for our appointment workflows, we put them in the game plan call folder and the follow-up call folder. So let's click into the game plan call folder and you can see our three standard workflows that we typically use around appointments. We've got our call reminders. We've got our cancellation workflow, which gets people rebooked after they cancel and our no show workflow, which works very similar to the cancellation workflow. Now, what I first want to do is walk you through the appointment triggers and actions. So to do that, let's create a new workflow and then let's start from scratch. Now there are, pre-built recipes by high level that you can use. I like to personally start from scratch. So I'm gonna click the start from scratch button. I'm gonna click create new workflow. And then we're first thing that we're gonna talk about is appointment trigger. So let's click add new workflow trigger. And we're gonna scroll down, click the select drop down, And the first one that pops up here is appointments. So if we just left the trigger like this, what's gonna happen is this workflow is going to trigger anytime any appointment status happens on any calendar. So anytime an appointment is canceled, anytime an appointment is no-showed, anytime an appointment is confirmed, and on any calendar in the system. So typically we don't want to create workflows like that. We want to narrow them down, make them more specific. So to do that, we're gonna add filters. Now one of the main filters we're gonna be using is appointment status is. And then you can select from any of these appointment statuses, confirmed, canceled, no-show are typically the most common ones we use. So let's go ahead and say the appointment status is confirmed. Now, if we left the trigger like this, what's gonna happen is this workflow is going to trigger anytime an appointment is confirmed on any calendar in the system. So again, we probably wanna narrow this down a little bit more unless you just want that to happen. So let's add another filter. And another one we use a lot is in calendar. And this helps us to narrow this workflow down to only be triggered by a certain status in a certain calendar. So the one that we use for our strategy sessions is a game plan call. So now what this tri trigger is now saying is anytime an appointment is confirmed on the game plan calendar, I want to trigger this workflow. So that's a pretty standard workflow trigger that we would use in a lot of our call reminder campaigns or workflows. So, but we can go a little bit deeper and we can add additional layers or filters onto this. So let's click add filter. The next one is you could have add, has tag and let's just select uh, opted in for our Facebook ads cheat sheet. So this is saying now that I only want this workflow to be triggered when someone books a game plan call and it's confirmed, but they have to have the opt in to FB ads cheat sheet uh, on their profile. And if they do, then this workflow is gonna trigger and all the actions that happen after that trigger are gonna take place. Now we can even go another layer deeper and we can add additional filters. The other filters that are available, so those are our standard fields. We can also use custom fields that we actually have programmed into the system, either by creating forms where we're collecting data for, on our different clients or our prospects, or you can actually go to the custom fields area and just create custom fields there. And as long as you're using something like multiple choice, radio buttons, or checks, uh, check marks, then you can use those custom fields to create filters for your appointment workflow triggers. 
All right, so those are triggers. Now let's check out the actual statuses that are associated with appointments. So the first one that we're going to look at is the update appointment status. So the action is once the trigger happens, we want to update the appointment status for that particular uh, contact. So you can update the status to confirmed, you can update to canceled, you can update to no show. So a good use case for this is we like to make sure that our sales reps just stay in one feature of the tool, which is opportunities. They can kind of manage their whole sales process from there. So what we do is we have a stage for initial call booked, we have a stage for call canceled, and we have a stage for no show. So what happens is when somebody moves over a contact into the cancellation or no show stages, then we are going to trigger that. The trigger is going to be a pipeline stage change. And then the action, one of the actions is going to update the status to either canceled or no show, depending on which stage they were moved to. And we'll show you that in our cancellation and no show campaigns or workflows. So now the other one, the other action I want to call your attention to is the wait functionality. So I'm going to call, I'm going to type in wait here. And you can see once we add the action, you can see we can wait for the event and appointment time. So this is the way that we create our reminder workflows. So I'm going to click on event appointment time. And then if we wanted to, let's say we wanted to send them a reminder the day before, I would do uh, wait until before one and then one day. And I like to give these actions a name so I know exactly what they do. So I'm going to do, let's just say 24 hour reminder. And then I'm going to click save action and we can do another one. Let's say wait and let's do again, event appointment time as the wait for. And then before, again, this is before the appointment and we're going to do one. And then we're going to change this to hours and we're going to save and we're going to give it a name. Remember one hour before, and then we're going to do another one. 10 minutes before. So I'm going to click wait. We're going to wait for the event appointment time. We're going to do 10 minutes before. We're going to make sure we give that a name. 10 minutes before. This is our typical cadence for our call reminders. We send a confirmation. We send a reminder the day before. We send a reminder an hour before and then 10 minutes before. So that is the triggers and actions. Now let's actually head over back into the workflow area and let's take a look at some of our standard appointment workflows. Let's go into the call reminders first. So now we're in the game plan call reminders workflow. The first thing that I want to look at is the actual trigger. You can see we've given it a good name so we know exactly what it does. And then we're going to choose appointments as our workflow trigger. And then the filters that we're adding here is in calendar game plan call. So it's in the only in the game plan call calendar and the appointment status is confirmed. So this is saying that when someone books an appointment and that appointment is confirmed on the game plan calendar, I want the actions below to happen. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove from all our workflows. Once we've got somebody booked, we really want to focus on that stage of our sales and marketing process. So we might send things like case studies. We might send them some pre-call homework to kind of warm them up and pre-sell them. But we want to pull them all of all the workflows that are trying to get them to book a a call. So then we're going to send an internal notification to the appointment user. Now the appointment user is different from the user. The appointment user is the person that's assigned to a contact once they book on a calendar. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move them in our sales pipeline to the initial call booked stage. So that's telling us that they've booked a call that's all automated, right? And then we're going to add a contact tag to them to tell us that they booked a game plan call. We're going to send their confirmation text and email. And then we're going to use that wait functionality that we talked about before to wait one day before the appointment. And then we're going to send that day before reminder. And then we're going to wait one hour before. We're going to send a text and an email. And then we're going to wait 10 minutes before and send another text and email. So that's our typical call reminders workflows for most of our snapshots. Now let's head out and let's actually go and look at the cancellation workflow. So now we're back into the game plan call folder. Let's go into the canceled workflow here. And let's talk about how we've structured this. Now, different people are going to do different things here. Again, what we've decided is we want our sales reps to really just focus on one area of the tool so they don't get overwhelmed. 
So the way that we do that is we create stages for canceled calls and no show. So this is saying that when someone is moved into the, in the sales pipeline to the pipeline stage, initial call canceled, then we're going to trigger all the actions below that. So we're triggering off of a pipeline stage change for our cancellation workflows. We're not triggering off appointments. So the next thing that happens is we're going to use that uh, update appointment status to update the actual appointment status. So now once they move the pipeline stage to canceled, we're going to update that appointment status to canceled. Now this is important if you're trying to really track and pay attention to your show up rate uh, and your appointment results. So we're going to update that status to canceled. And then we're going to add a tag that tells us that this person canceled a call. We're going to remove them from the call reminders. Remember, when we don't want to continue to send call reminders if they've canceled because they're not going to show up for that call. So there's no reason to remind them. It might annoy them. Then we're going to send an internal notification via email to the appointment user that tells that person that their contact canceled, but we're trying to get them rebooked. Then we're going to wait for an hour. And the reason we wait for an hour is you never know when someone might, you know, they missed the call, they were gotten busy and they just forgot about it. But they might, if you reach out to them, they might contact you 15 minutes later and say, hey, you're still around. Can we do the call? So we want to give them some time to do that. So we're going to wait an hour and then we're going to send a text and email follow up to try to get them rebooked. And then we're going to wait till 11 a.m. the next day, do the same thing. And then we're going to wait another 24 hours. So we send a series of three follow-ups to try to get them rebooked. And so that is the cancellation workflow. And the no-show workflow is very similar. Let's just show you a couple of changes here. So the one change is now we're going to move them to the no-show stage instead of the cancellation stage. And then we're going to update that status, the appointment status to no-show. Again, this is very important when you're, if you're tracking your appointment show up rate. And then we're going to add the tag as a no-show. So those are the three big differences about our no-show workflow versus our uh, cancellation workflow. Now I want to take you back to the pipeline so you'll kind of get an idea of how this works for our salespeople. So this is our sales pipeline. Lead comes in. Initial call is booked on the calendar. They're automatically moved to this stage. Then the actual sales rep will have the call. If they cancel the call, they'll move them here. That'll trigger that cancellation workflow. If they no-show the call, they'll move them here. That'll trigger the no-show workflow. Once the call is completed, they'll move them over here. You could also add an automation that, that says, hey, move them an hour after the call if I haven't marked them as no-show or canceled. All right, so to sum up what you learned in this video, we talked about appointment triggers, we talked about appointment actions, we also peeled back the curtain and we walked you through some of our appointment workflows, our call reminders, our cancellation workflows, and our no-show workflows. If you'd like to get your hands on any of our snapshots or SOPs around building this kind of stuff, I'll drop some links below in the description. And if you like this video, be sure and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next video.